I'm Nick, and along with my co-authors, I'd like to tell you that attacking deep networks with surrogate-based adversarial black box methods is easy. Over the next five minutes, I'm going to explain what that means and why it's important to you whether or not you're into adversarial attacks already. So in the most common version of the adversarial attack problem, you're given a classification network and some input image, and the goal is to find a small change to that image that leads the net to change its output classification. In the relatively hard black box version of the problem, you can only see what the network outputs for a given input, not the network internals, and you're not allowed backward passes. But in score-based black box attacks, the output is taken to mean the class score vector, not just the top class ID. And in surrogate-based black box attacks, you're allowed to use another network called the surrogate, which is trained similarly to the target network. And you can run backward passes on this one if you want and transfer the result to the target. And that combination is the problem that we are considering here. And we contend that the problem is easy. And by easy, what we mean is that given this problem definition, you should almost always be able to find a valid adversary around the given input in a small number of steps using a simple algorithm. And the main intuition for why that is is that deep nets aren't that different from one another in the sense that when trained on similar data, they tend to learn similar functions, i.e. they solve the problem in pretty much the same way. So the surrogate then contains a lot of information about the target. And if you've got output scores, you can use standard optimization techniques on top of that. Our approach is just projected gradient ascent on a standard adversarial margin loss, except that we don't have the true gradient, which is over here on the target's loss landscape, because that's in the black box. We have to guess it. And the algorithm uses two ways of doing that. So the first one, direct transfer, just means using the surrogates version of the loss gradient. If that works, and it usually does, then we just use that. But if it does fail at any point, we have a backup, which is that we take a random sample from the span of all of the surrogate's class score gradients, which is called the co-image. You can just think of this as a slightly generalized type of gradient transfer. So we call the method GFCS, which stands for gradient first, co-image second. And this is the entire method in pseudocode. If you were to implement this as written without any additional tricks, you should get the results that we are presenting here. The details of the experimental setup are here if you want to look through them, but basically the goal is to find adversaries that are within a certain L2 distance of the input images in as few queries to the target net as possible. And the competitors are listed here, and this framework has been carefully designed to match what was done in those papers. In particular, since we're making an argument about similarity and transferability between networks, we've made a point of using the same networks that appeared across those papers rather than picking our own. So the three target networks are these, and the two choices of surrogates are this one, or this set of four which get used together as a group, which gives us six different ways of pairing targets with surrogates. So here we have the results for all six target surrogate pairs. And these are for untargeted attacks, which means that the attack is considered to have succeeded if the net outputs anything other than the ground truth class for the given image. Each x-axis, which is log scaled, is the query count, and each y-axis is the number of images whose adversary requires no more than that many queries to find. So those are like quasi-CDFs. The higher the curve, the better the method is, and the blue curves at the top are GFCS. Now a large fraction of images are fooled in a very low number of queries. So to get a view of that, we're gonna look at the same results as a table of median query counts. And that looks like this. What you're seeing here is that GFCS solves most of the problem using just a handful of queries. And that's while keeping the overall success rates very high. So we have some small points to make and some big ones. And the small ones are, you know, this is a very effective adversarial attack. If you're going to work on this problem, benchmark against us, that sort of thing. But the bigger points, uh, and that we think are of more general interest, are in that validation of the core hypothesis that these networks are very similar to one another. And so we think that this method is a useful tool for comparing networks. Uh, for example, assessing how different a novel architecture is from more established ones. Please read the paper for more details, including our excellent targeted attack results and some interesting analysis of how the algorithm does what it does. And thank you for watching.